We are now ready for step four of translation to evaluate the alternative components identified in step three to fulfill the hypothetical task 9c. Here is a worksheet that makes explicit what goes through the mind of an expert user of Atlas TI when thinking through the pros and cons of each possible component. This step four worksheet is included in the PDF that you can download. The worksheet is intended for learning purposes. We don't anticipate anybody would want to fill it out for every analytic task in every project, but doing it a few times will cement the thinking process and then it will become second nature to think through the possibilities of each component in terms of what is anticipated to come next and quickly select the best component. We will be using this worksheet throughout the final set of harnessing component videos that demonstrate different ways to harness the same component to fulfill very different tasks, whereas here we're looking at alternative components to use to fulfill the same analytic task. In each case, we weigh up the pros and cons of a component in a particular context. We will now use the worksheet to systematically evaluate the pros and cons of each possible component for representing variability. If you've already had experience with all the Atlas TI components and the actions you can take on them, then the details of this discussion of alternative ways forward will make a lot of sense. If you don't yet have this experience, then the discussion will still be of great use for illustrating the way of thinking, and as you gradually gain more experience with the components, you'll be able to put this process into practice. First, we need to remind ourselves what we mean by variability. This refers to differences in the way that discursive features or uses of language function differently in different contexts. So in the data, this means different ways that a discursive feature functions in one person's posts compared to how it functions in another person's posts that we classify as reflecting the same discursive feature. One simple and convenient way to capture variability is therefore to write a note about it in the comment area of the quotation. And then when quotations are reflected on later, either on screen or in printouts, the comments are right there to review. We can also filter the list of quotations to see only the ones with comments, which makes it more efficient, and also view just the ones that don't have comments. However, there are a couple of disadvantages we might well be writing other quotation comments that have nothing to do with variability. And so those quotations will appear in the wrong list, which is inefficient if you're segregating those with and without comments for focused interpretation. We also can't do anything further on the comments as they are not true independent components. But if the interpretive work we have in mind as the next anticipated step is adequately facilitated by using quotation comments, then this is something to consider. Another possibility is not just writing these notes about variability on the quotations comment, but tagging the quotations that have some variability with a single variability code. As you know, this is the choice that we have already seen demonstrated by Trina in the actual project. This choice allows all the quotations with variability to be easily retrieved. And if we use the query tool, then all the quotations not tagged with the variability code can also be retrieved as a separate set of quotations. Another possibility is to create many different variability codes and give them different names, basically organizing kinds of variability as you discover different examples. This creates two separate set of codes though, one for features and one for variability. And so two distinct conceptualization activities move along in parallel as you read and code each quotation. Whether this is a good idea depends on what you plan next. Is variability an interpretational activity independent of the interpretation of discursive features and might even be written about separately? Or is variability only an adjunct to the interpretation of each discursive feature to enrich the understanding and description of individual discursive features and not as an avenue of investigation in itself? The methodology will answer this question, or it may be unknown at this point until we see how much rich variability there is. So it may be more efficient to begin separating kinds of variability in this way with different codes, and if later we decide that's a mistake, we can easily merge them into a single variability code and proceed in that way. Taking care to save a copy of the Atlas TI project before starting to merge the codes 
in case we ever want to review the separate ones for some unanticipated reason in the future. One disadvantage of using a single variability code to essentially tag quotations that have variability is that there is not a convenient place to write separate notes or interpretations about the quotations with or without variability, which might explain why Trina decided to conduct all this writing activity in Word. Moving to the second page of the worksheet, another possibility is to use code comments. If we decide to use a single variability code, then we can record all writing about variability in this one code's comment. An advantage of doing this is that all writing about variability is in one writing area. Alternatively, if we don't use a single variability code, but just write comments about variability in the discursive feature codes, an advantage is that a code filter can be used to first see all the discursive feature codes without comments, and then only those with comments. But this requires more effort to possibly label each note you make in the comments with the quotation number it comes from for future reference, and the numerous notes you write in the freeform comment area cannot be sorted or organized in any way, and no separate further operations can be done, as comments are not independent components that can be acted on. This may not be needed in terms of what is coming next, but if it is, this can be mitigated by using individual memos, each linked to a variability code, because memos are independent components that can be acted on to group them, sort them, change what they are linked to, and so on. But the memo is still a single freeform writing area, and unless we want to move to having multiple memos for each code, for each example of variability, which is definitely not practical, this doesn't make much sense in this situation, and we're better off with multiple variability codes, each with its own comment. However, an alternative is to have a single memo that could be used to write holistically about variability as new ideas are noted, basically doing the same as Trina did in the real project in Word, but writing this all in an Atlas TI memo instead of outside Atlas TI in Word may have the psychological advantage of remaining in Atlas TI so that one is nudged towards easily referring back to underlying data more readily than if one is outside Atlas TI in Word, which psychologically nudges one to stay outside Atlas TI as if one has finished the Atlas TI phase of working with the data. Before we get on to my preferred way of accomplishing this particular task, please note that none of the pros and cons I've mentioned so far are guides for harnessing these components in the same way in all situations. The pros and cons are weighed up differently in each situation to see which are most compelling in the light of the methodology and the research question, and what you've done so far and what you plan to do next. The least beneficial way to use Atlas TI is to use it in the same way in every situation. The final possible component to consider is smart codes. Let's assume we've weighed up the pros and cons of the other possible components and decided that a single code for variability provides the best choice so far, as Trina in fact decided in her project. The disadvantages of writing in the single comment area of this code led her not to use the comments at all, but to switch to working in Word and exiting Atlas TI because the alternative of developing a set of multiple variability codes for different kinds of variability was not a good fit for the methodology, which focuses on the variability within each discursive feature, not on developing distinct overall kinds of variability. However, considering smart codes offers additional advantages that do fit the methodology and builds on the choice so far of having a single code for variability. This code can be used just to tag quotations that indicate variability, as Trina did, but then two smart codes can be created for each discursive feature. First, for quotations coded to both the discursive feature code and also to the variability code, and second, for the discursive feature code and not coded to the variability code. Descriptions of variability can then be written in the comment of each smart code to fulfill the methodological purpose of enriching the understanding of that discursive feature rather than developing separate analysis of variability itself, and the only disadvantages are practical. A little more effort in writing in the quotation numbers for each variability note in the freeform comment area, and of course needing to get up to speed on using the query tool to create the smart codes. In part three, I'll demonstrate how to create and use these smart codes in Trina's project.